Hey everyone, it's Holly. I'm back. I have a little bit of a different lighting setup going on right now. Um, I had, I knew I had this really bright kind of white light, which it might not be quite as bright to you all. Um, somewhere in a box at my house and I just had to find it. I went through like 20 boxes looking for it, finally came across it. So I'm hopeful that maybe when I shoot these videos that um, the lighting is gonna be a little bit better and um, you'll be able to see the makeup application and what kind of look it has going on a little bit better uh, than you could before. And I'm just sitting here cracking up at myself because I was doing some test shots with the lighting to move it around and see uh, where we needed to go with it. And I was just acting crazy. So anyway, um, before I get this uh, foundation review is what it's going to be started today, I'm going to share a new product that I have that was inexpensive and that I like. And um, I was on my way to church the other night and I needed to stop and get something to drink. And all of the like convenience stores and gas stations are on one side of the street and Walgreens is on the side that I'm on. So I stopped by there to get a soda and um, I know it seems like I live at Walgreens, but I don't, I promise. It's just the most convenient place to stop. And I realized I hadn't put a fragrance on yet, so I was like, I'm just gonna walk by their fragrance aisle and see what's happening over there and what I can get at a nice price. And the first thing I picked up, because the packaging is so beautiful, is this Paris Hilton Eris Body Mist. I didn't even know Paris Hilton was still making products. Um, but oh, it smells so nice. And I can't really 100% put into words exactly what it smells like. But if I had to say, it smells like a really fresh, clean smelling uh, Bath & Body Works Plumeria mixed with a um, Victoria's Secret um, Love Spell, but just much softer than both of those scents. It's interesting. Um, but anyway, today I'm going to be reviewing a foundation. This uh, foundation I've heard a lot about. I watched several YouTubers do reviews about it, um, and they kind of gave mm, like mixed reviews. Not super excited about it, but not um, hating on it either. A few hated on it. Let's be real. But, um, I noticed that a lot of the YouTubers, and I think maybe this is just coincidence, I don't know, they seem to have more of like a dry skin type. And um, I am more of a combination skin type. And I'm more like normal, kind of in these areas, and then I'm oily in my T-zone. And so there's one YouTuber, she's Australian, who has a skin type like mine, and that's Nakia Joy, I believe is her name. And so anytime she tries out any complexion products and face products, things like that, um, I usually can trust what she's saying because if it works for her, nine times out of ten, it's going to work for me. So um, she tried this and did a three-day review of it, and she really liked it. And so um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try it today and then I'm going to um, wear it again tomorrow and again the next day. I'm going to use different primers with it each time so uh, that way I can get kind of a true um, idea of how it really performs. Today I'm going to use my Benefit the Professional Primer, which is my favorite primer. And um, you know, a lot of people say when you review a foundation, why do you even use a primer? Because that's not gonna tell you how the true foundation performs. However, I wouldn't be doing a fair review and giving the foundation a fair chance if uh, I didn't use it in combination with the products that I love and work for me on a day-to-day -day basis. So. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use it with the Benefit Professional Primer today. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to use it with the um, Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer, which I got in my Play by Sephora box this month. And I've been really wanting to try that. I've been using a face wash that um, dries my skin out more. And I'm in a drier climate here in Colorado than I used to be when I lived in the more humid climate that is Kentucky. And so... Um, 
since my face has been a little more dry, I wanted to try incorporating a moisturizer into my routine. I typically don't use a moisturizer just because I'm so oily. I don't want to add any more moisture and oil to this face of mine, but I'm feeling like I kind of am starting to need it at this point. So um, I'm going to try it with that primerizer because I hear that the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer is awesome. So maybe it in combination with the moisturizer will work for me. And um, I'm going to wear it underneath of the Super Stay Foundation that I'm going to be testing out today. And then I'll probably use an e.l.f. primer that I really like that's more of like a tacky finish than a smooth finish like the, um, the Porefessional is. Just to see what it's like in combination with different products. So, I've talked enough. Let's get this party started. Um, so, like I said, I'm going to be reviewing the Superstay Full Coverage Foundation by Maybelline. It says that you get up to 24 hours of wear out of it. Not that I thought I would get more than 24 hours. It's kind of interesting. Up to. So, it's just saying like 24 hours max is all you're going to be able to wear it. But really like two, three hours and you're going to have problems. I don't know. But um, this is kind of like a, like I said, a first impressions review that I'm going to be giving today. And then I will follow it up with a second video at the end of the three-day period and talk about my final thoughts on it. So what this foundation claims to do is be a full, cover full coverage foundation, up to 24-hour wear, seamless matte finish, breathable and comfortable Fade and transfer resistant. That's a big claim. Transfer resistant. Like usually if I put a good setting spray on with the foundation, it transfers a lot less, but I've never seen a transfer resistant foundation, especially on its own. Uh, oil free, doesn't clog pores, and dermatologist tested. This is what the bottle looks like, ladies and gentlemen. Trying to keep it in the light. And um, it's a really cute bottle. It is very similar to the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation, which was kind of like a cult favorite. Everyone loved it because it came in two formulas, the Matte and Poreless and the Dewy Smooth. Um, I believe it was Dewy Smooth. I didn't use it, so I can't remember if that's exactly what it was called. But um, I did like the Matte and Poreless one. It's not my all-time favorite foundation in the whole entire world. That would be the Milani Two and one. Let me get it. So I can show you the bottle in case you didn't watch my other video. The Milani two in one foundation concealer. Conceal and perfect. Um, I really like that. That's my holy grail foundation. It runs between eight to ten dollars, depending on where you purchase it, uh, at a drugstore. And this one I think was twelve or thirteen dollars when I bought this. I picked up a few other things at the store. So I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how much it was, but I remember seeing it a couple weeks ago for like twelve or thirteen bucks. So I'm assuming it is still the same price. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this makeup that I have on my face right now and then we're going to do a little um, application of this foundation and see how it works. Uh, I'm going to do this half of my face with um, a brush and then I'm going to do this half of my face with a blending sponge and I'm going to see how each applies. Um, that way, if you're more of a person who likes to apply your foundation with a brush, which I used to be, so I understand that, you can see how it's going to look with that. And then if you're more of a person that likes to use a beauty sponge, you can see what it's going to look like on this side. So, I'm not going to go on anymore. I'm going to clean my face. I'm going to clean it with a baby wipe that already has a little bit of makeup on it. I just wiped my hands earlier. And the Garnier Skin Active Micellar Cleansing Water All-in-One removes makeup, even waterproof mascara, plus cleanses, plus refreshes for all skin types, even sensitive. Um, I love this in combination with the baby wipe to remove my makeup because those makeup wipes are super expensive. This whole big bottle is like six or seven dollars. I got this at Walmart. Um, and so... That with, um, I think I paid like $1.75 for 72 baby wipes. So together, they're not that expensive, but sometimes you can pay like 20 bucks for one package of those 
makeup removing wipes and um, this just does just as good of a job. So just make sure you shake this product up before you use it. I've already shaken it up a little bit just talking and using it, but you can see that there's a layer of product where it's like broken up. But if you just shake it up, then that is gone. And so I'm gonna take this foundation and um, other face makeup off and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I went ahead and put some of that Benefit, the Professional Primer on, which I will show you right there. And um, like I said, that's my everyday kind of go-to primer. So we're gonna try it with that first. This foundation has a pump, which is cool. The Fit Me Foundation by Maybelline did not have a pump. So it was kind of messy um, when you'd have to like pour it from the glass bottle onto your hand. So um, I had to rub and rub to get the makeup off right here on my cheek. And it's so red, but that will tell us if this is good at covering redness. So let's just take all things as the good. Um, there you have it. So I'm in shade 130, buff beige, and a good way to tell if a foundation is your shade or not is to just do a little swatch on your chest area. A lot of people say to do it on your neck. However, your neck is kind of a different skin type than your face. Your chest is gonna be the closest skin type to your face. Um, and the closest in shade. So it's better to do it down there, in my opinion. Um, this is going on pretty nicely. Let me grab my mirror, because right now I'm just looking in the mirror that's far away. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, she matte. This is definitely matte. It does live up to those claims, and it did cover up the redness on my face. Let me try to fix this light a little bit. There we go. Okay, it did cover up the redness on my face, um, which is awesome. So that means it is a full coverage foundation, I believe, just from working with it. Um, <clears throat> so I'm liking it so far. And on the other side, I'm gonna take a dampened beauty blender and um, one thing that I, it's not a beauty blender, I'm sorry, it's a beauty sponge. Beauty blender is a brand name and those sponges are $20 and I'm not paying that for it. Um, this I just used earlier to um, apply some foundation, but I cleaned it last night. But one thing that I didn't say in my face makeup video that I wanted to say in this one is that you want your uh, beauty sponge to be squishy so if it's not then it's going to I'm going ahead and going in on this side then it's going to uh, hurt you when you try to use it and it's really not going to do the job of pressing the product into your face which is kind of the purpose of a beauty sponge like a soft one will I picked up one that was like five dollars at our version of Kroger called King Super and it was so hard, even when I got it wet, that it gave a new meaning to the term beat your face, which is, if you're not familiar with that term, it's kind of like when you have like a full face of makeup on, like you're going full glam, you're doing the most makeup that you normally would like kind of ever do. And that's called beating your face. Um, or have it on a full beat, which means like a full face of makeup. Um, and I really felt like I was beating my face with that beauty sponge. I'm getting it in my eyeshadow. I hate my eye makeup being on before my face makeup. Okay, so um, this is going on really, really matte. Really matte. There went my light, I'm so sorry. It's like a touch. So it uh, when you touch it, it goes on and off and I just bumped into it. I'm just doing a little bit more here on my nose. Okay. 
All right. It just has like this soft, like almost velvety finish to it. And um, it applied fine with the brush on this side. I'm gonna try to get in close, but into the light where you can see it. But I do like it better on the beauty sponge side. I feel like it got more into the pores. Hmm. I'm just kind of looking here to see what I think. This is just, I hope that you can see it as well as I can, but this is just so, like, soft. That's a good explanation for it. It is so soft looking. I'm gonna try to turn out my overhead light and see if maybe that helps with you being able to just see how soft it is. It's just, it really is very, very, very soft. And um, I like that look, you know, it kind of like baby doll skin almost look. Um, but we'll have to see, you know, how it does. I'm going to put my concealer on, my bronzer and my blush. Also, the other day I didn't um, say this, but the reason why you wanna use like a bronzer and a blush and a concealer, like use the concealer to illuminate under the eyes and use um, a blush to give you those, like some pink in your cheeks and a bronzer to give you just like a bronzed sunny look. Um, is because your foundation should give you more of like a clean slate as far as pigmentation goes. Your face should all be one color. And then you use the bronzer and the blush and the concealer to kind of put the life back in your face. Give it some of those pigments back that aren't natural but that would naturally be there if you didn't coat your face in foundation. So that's the purpose for it. I didn't really explain that very well the other day, so I wanted to explain it this time. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna go do that and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back for this final look. Um, so far, I really do like this foundation. Um, I'm gonna try to scoot in close so you can see what it's looking like after I applied um, the rest of the products to my face that I always use. One thing I will say that was kind of interesting is that, I have a hair in my mouth, there we go, is that it almost felt like there was a powder already on my face after I put it on. It was that matte. Um, so it might not work well for dry skinned people, but um, I will let you know how it does in my um, drier areas too, which should be kind of a good indicator to you as to how it will be if you have like dry patchy places on your face at all. Um, so with all of that being said, I will go ahead and go about my day. I'm gonna mop the floors. I'm going to um, do some light cleaning and I'm gonna be swinging it out the window with binoculars, it's funny. Um, do some light cleaning, uh, vacuum, things like that. And I have an event to go to tonight. It is 3.22 right now. And so I'm hoping that when I go to get ready for this event at around 7.15 or so, around four hours later, that I won't have to do anything at all with this look. So we'll see. Um, hopefully I can just, you know, do a little light powdering and that be it. But um, at the end of the three days, I'll do an updated video and let you all know what my final thoughts are on this product. Um, until then, um, I'm not really sure what my next video is gonna be about. We'll have to wait and see. I think I might do a brows video. Um, but until then, I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Again, please like and subscribe to my channel. And, um, I, God bless, and I'll see you next time.